My name is Mike Mace. I'm here to talk to you about a clash in technologies. Our case in point that I'm going to use to demonstrate the clash in technology and a need for the FCC to revise its look at interference as it relates to this new technologies that are coming around us. Case in point will be the unwanted acceleration of the Toyotas that everybody would be familiar with. We have. Uh, <clears throat> to give us some background on this, uh, FCC Part 15 rules basically are, are govern interference as it relates to intended and non-intended devices. For instance, if you were to have uh, a pair of walkie-talkies, one transmitting, one receiving, you have an intended transmitter and an intended receiver. However, if you had that walkie-talkie interfering with your television, you would then have an intended transmitter and an unintended receiver picking up that signal. Part 15 would, would govern it and say that, that that's not supposed to happen. But sometime about 20 years ago, uh, at the want of a lot of manufacturers, they kind of relaxed a lot of these rules to allow many devices that were created to be made a little cheaper, I guess would be the simplest way to put it. And they removed a lot of the shielding that were protected from radio waves and other types of interference given the time that has passed, there is a lot of this type of RF generating devices out there. The problem is getting to be that many more of them now are digital in nature. It's starting to become all around us. I mean, they're putting, uh, they're putting the microcontrollers into, you know, oven ranges, coffee pots. Uh, they control the light systems, the street lights in the city. They're uh, uh, automatic door openers, alarm systems. Uh, just about anything you can think of has been modernized now with the use of microcontrollers or some people would call that a computer. Uh, so part 15 is supposed to govern this intermix in between devices. However, 20 years ago they relaxed these rules and made everybody come up with a notice to say basically uh, your device, whether it's a TV, a stereo, a walkie-talkie, cannot cause harmful interference to anything else. So if, if it does, you will have to cease operation. And, that's, and if it's no value to you, it's your loss, basically. And if it happens to receive any unwanted interference, you have to live with it. You have no recourse. We have to give you a crash course in radio electronics digital radio electronics, and computer data communications. Cell phones is our prime example here. Uh, GSM cell phones. Uh, GSM is, stands for simply uh, Global System for Mobile Communications. And that's a particular point of interest to us because GSM cell phones have what we call in radio a parasitic type of transmitter. I mean, they use uh, what is called phase or shift or step type modulation for putting digital information over a radio wave. But this signal often is very parasitic. And a quick demonstration of that, if you've ever had your, your cell phone interfere with your computer speakers or uh, your car stereo, home audio, it's very easy. You know, that buzzing that you're hearing is basically data. As all computers communicate basically the same way, whether you're, whether you're uh, storing information to a hard drive, talking to another computer on the internet, uh, up your digital camera storage and upload, those pictures are all stored in one common language, basically, it is binary information. Binary information is basically ones and zeros. 
not all devices will use that in the same manner, but they all use ones and zeros, and we call that mark and space. In a computer communication, you basically use a bunch of these ones and zeros to make up a word. And the number here represented would be two, would be the number six. Uh, but all computers use this format, including digital cell phone communications. You can have a string of data that could be fairly long. Now what that what all that means is is variable depending on the application of it. But basically, this is how it talks uh, to another device or stores, you know, format. <clears throat> when we get into GSM cell phones, uh, GSM case in point, uh, and you're looking at this data as it's being transmitted over the air, and we're looking at this on an oscilloscope, you would be looking at something like. Where you would have the mark, that would be a one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. This is the basic format of a digital over the air transmission. And when we're looking at this, this would be time. A little bit about automobiles. one time, uh, autos were completely mechanically driven. Sometime in the late 70s and early 80s, we got into uh, electronically controlled vehicles. But basically, the computers at that time were reactionary to the mechanical function. And they still pretty much are. But now that we're using microcontrollers to govern a vehicle on the road where you have the lives within and the lives around that vehicle it gets to be a little touchier situation. If we jump right to Toyota's case and use the idea that you have this GSM, GSM signal that becomes parasitic. And being, being parasitic means that it will attach itself to other wiring, which is the same thing that happens when, say, you get near a, uh, a microphone with it, it might get picked up in the public address system, uh, your speaker system, if it's unshielded, more particularly. When this gets picked up in a vehicle wire, you have kind of a new set of problems arise because most of these vehicles in question are what I guess you would call fly by wire, where you have direct electrical. Uh, actuation. In other words, uh, you may be moving a mechanical device, but it's not doing anything to the engine other than moving a sensor. And electronically, the computer's interpreting that and making whatever motions or adjustments that it needs based on that. And anything, anyone in the computer world and programming would know that when you get garbage into the computer, the only thing that can come out is also garbage. So you have what the car companies like to call an, e oops, an ECU, electronic control unit, or an ECM. Most people refer to it as a computer. In the computer world, we call these microcontrollers. But basically, you've got, in a fly-by wire, you're going to have a wire that goes over to sense where this gas pedal is positioned. It doesn't mechanically actuate an air inlet to the carburetor necessarily as and be reactionary. It's, it's taking input directly from the user through the computer interpreting that to the engine. It's making all the adjustments for you. 